Today, I'm going to try to make real synthetic rubies using a thermite reaction that I'm pretty sure has never been done before. But before I get to that, let's address the questions of what even is a ruby and how do you make one? Basically, a ruby is simply crystalline aluminum oxide, otherwise known as sapphire, with just a tiny amount of chromium replacing some of the aluminum sites. That chromium is what gives the crystal its signature red color, and it's actually what allows for lasing to occur in ruby lasers. Really, the only thing you need to make ruby is A, a near homogeneous mixture of aluminum and chromium oxide, and B, enough heat to melt the two together and make anyone a little nervous in the process. Now this got me thinking. I've got more lithium metal than I know what to do with, and I know this burns at temperatures in excess of what I should need to melt the two oxides together. So what would happen if I used the heat from the burning lithium metal to make rubies directly? This idea makes even more sense when you consider that lithium is so reactive as an alkali metal that it should undergo a thermite reaction with the aluminum and chromium oxides to release even more heat, which then goes into melting and fusing any surrounding powder together. Well, at least that's what should happen in theory. How about we try it out? So here I've got roughly a couple hundred grams of 100 to 1 aluminum oxide to chromium oxide mix, with both powders about 50 micron or less in size. I'm placing a piece of freshly cut lithium metal that's only about 2 grams in weight, but with the specific energy of lithium, this should do the job no problem. Now all I have to do is light the lithium on fire in air, which is surprisingly hard to do for an alkali metal. It's worth remembering that lithium has the highest specific heat capacity of any solid phase material, and that's largely why I can torch it for what feels like forever before it finally becomes hot enough to ignite. Now you're looking at a pretty hot metal fire in air, but just wait until the reaction front makes its way to the abundant source of oxygen underneath. So our reaction has ended, leaving us with an incandescent mass of various oxides, as well as unreacted metallic lithium, which has alloyed with the aluminum product. Our ruby should be located towards the edge of this melt, where little contamination of lithium should be expected. But before we can break it open to see if this worked or not, notice that yellow coloration at the surface? Clearly this has to be something bad. After all, yellow equals bad in chemistry. So what's going on? Well, it looks like a tiny amount of chromium oxide has been further oxidized to what I can only assume is lithium chromate. And yeah, this is pretty bad. Chromates may be less toxic than their cousin dichromates, but we will still have to destroy this stuff through reduction later in the video. I'm more than willing to bet that this unexpected oxidation of trivalent chromium to hexavalent chromium occurred in the presence of lithium peroxide, a powerful oxidizing agent that just so happens to form when lithium burns in air. Now just a quick side note, Electron Impressions has just started a Patreon where you can go watch premium content from all three of us before it's released, so go check that out if you're interested. We currently have a deal for new patrons where if you join at the $10 a month tier, we are going to ship you one of our 2 inch Lichtenberg figures at no additional cost. That's roughly a 60% discount on what we normally sell these for. Anyway, when we look closely at the massive oxides using a UV light to illuminate, we can start to get an idea of where rubies were created. You see, the UV light causes rubies to fluoresce through excitation of the trivalent chromium ions that we have effectively doped the alumina with. Carefully moving this all to a beaker, we can start to break apart the massive oxides to see the extent of ruby formation within. Now none of these rubies are large enough to actually do anything with, but I think it's pretty cool how clearly visible they are distributed even near the surface of the bulk. Despite how well this experiment lined up with theory, there's something here that I don't understand and I'm hoping some of you in the comments might be able to help identify. See those spots of yellow fluorescence? There's not a whole lot of them, but they are visibly distinguishable from the characteristic ruby red everywhere else. And I can only guess that since they are in a more lithium rich area, they must be some sort of doped lithium illuminate. 
This is pure speculation, but I'd be interested to hear people's thoughts on what this may be. Now for the not so fun part. I started neutralizing all the chromate present by digesting the mass of oxides, ruby and all, in dilute sulfuric acid. Next, I added sodium metabisulfite, which decomposes in the acidic environment to release sulfur dioxide gas, and this is what is actually reducing the hexavalent chromate into trivalent chromium-3, which is still currently soluble. Finally, I add enough potassium hydroxide base to fully neutralize the acid and crash out the chromium as chromium hydroxide, a much safer compound to dispose of. Let us know in the comments if you have any ideas for future lithium reactions or anything related. And thanks for watching.